Right, E2 reaction mechanism. E2 reaction mechanisms are very popular for primary alkyl halides. That is to say that the carbon that has the halide or leaving group on it is only attached to one other carbon. Now that one other carbon needs to have a hydrogen on it. This hydrogen is gonna be the one I remove because you need to remove this H along with the leaving group to do the elimination in the first place. That's an extra requirement for E2 that is not a requirement in SN2, even though the conditions for each one are almost the same. You'll, you'll start with your alkyl, your primary alkyl halide. You'll have concentration some concentration of a nucleophile. The other hint they may give you is if you're in the IB program is that if they say in ethanol or ethanolic sodium hydroxide, that's their hint that they want an elimination mechanism as opposed to a substitution. So do E2, not SN2. If you're in university, uh, it depends on solvent, nucleophile, temperature, all that other kind of stuff. Uh, but IB makes it very easy for the kids because it's grade 12. So what are you gonna do, right? Anyways, let me show you. So here's my primary alkyl halide. I've got one iodopropane here. My I is going to be removed and I have the hydrogen that I'm also removing on the opposite side of the molecule. That's important for the way that the electrons flow. My nucleophile is going to attack that hydrogen. The lone pair from my nucleophile will attach to it. It's a very Lewis acid base reaction happening there. And the electron pair that holds that hydrogen to the carbon will flow into a pi bond between these two carbon atoms. If you're wondering why it flows this way, this leaving group, iodine or bromine or whatever it is, is electronegative. That leaves a slight delta plus charge on my carbon here. So the electrons are slightly more attracted in that direction. But carbon can only have four bonds at once and I doesn't mind, iodine doesn't mind having a, a full octet of electrons. So the electrons in the CI bond will go in completely to I. Now take a look. I've got an attack here. I've got electron flow this way and I've got the I falling off over here. In the end, I'm gonna end up with that carbon, which has two hydrogens on it, attached double bondedly to this carbon, which has one H left on it, after all I removed this one, and a CH3 group. I've turned my alkyl halide into an alkene. But the key to the mechanism is this middle part, which is the transition state. It's the thing at the very top of the potential energy curve. It's the highest energy. It's the halfway point between these two. Now, let me draw this very carefully for you. I'm currently drawing all the bonds that do not change. These guys are not affected by the reaction itself. I'm just gonna get another color pen here to show you what's going on. The iodine is falling off. I'm gonna show him as a half bond dotted line. This single bond is becoming a double bond, so I'm going to show him as a one and a half bond. This hydrogen is being stolen by my OH. This single bond is disintegrating. I will show it as a half bond, and I'm gonna show a half bond to that nucleophile. I'm only going to show two lone pairs because the, uh, the, the other lone pair here is what's helping to make that bond. Now, overall, this thing has a minus one charge. This was a neutral molecule and an OH minus ion combining. So there is a minus charge floating around there, but this is the transition state. Cool? Cool. Notice I've got four partial bonds here and most teachers are gonna want you to show all of that stuff. I've got a half bond here, one and a half here, half here, half here, cool? In the end, I end up with this. My hydrogen is connected fully to my OH, so I've got 
uh, water is a byproduct. And my iodide ion has a full octet of electrons up here. Cool? Cool. It's pretty sweet. The nucleophile steals the H at the exact same time that I falls off the carbon adjacent to it. It's kind of like SN2 in that it is a concerted reaction. One thing attacks from one side, one thing leaves from another side. But instead of being a straight substitution, it's an elimination in that we're stealing an H from this side and the I is falling off this side. We end up with a double bond between the two carbons. Cool. Last thing I want to point out is that the slowest step, or rather only step of this mechanism, has Ri playing a role, the alkyl halide, and it also has OH- playing a role. It's a bimolecular collision. Oh, look, bimolecular. And the overall order of 1 plus 1, which makes 2, is where we get the 2 in SN2, even though it's only a one-step mechanism. Cool? And that's how it goes. E2 mechanism. Learn it. Practice it. Be awesome. And best of luck.